Hey, you're listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for local churches from local churches. For more information and free resources, you can check out SovereignGraceMusic.org. Thanks for joining us. Hello, welcome to Sound Plus Doctrine. I am David Zimmer. I'm Bob Coughlin, and we have a special guest with us Very today, special and guest. we will have him a few times. Okay, yes. After this, it's Devin, my son. Dev, it's great to have you. If I had an applause button, I would hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be here with you guys. Raise your hands. Uh, yeah. So Devin's going to be joining us for a few podcasts, and today we wanted to talk about the doctrine part of Sound Plus Doctrine. Mm. Um, we can think uh, that doctrine. You know, I mean, this podcast is about how doctrine fuels and governs what we do when we gather. But we're going to. Uh, spend some time today talking about how doctrine affects the way we live. Mm. It's not just about our meetings. You know, there can be a tendency if you're listening to podcasts like this to think, well, doctrine, you know, it's what we sing about, it, it, it informs what we do. But it, before that, it really informs the way we live. Mm. And so that's what we're going to dive in today. And Devin's going to help us do it. Wonderful. Uh, well, Dev, it's awesome. Uh, to have you. I feel like um, for our listeners who are familiar with you but don't really know your story, I thought we could like just start at the beginning. What it's like to uh, be Bob Coughlin's son. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Do you want me to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. What, uh, uh, what was it like um, growing up with Bob and uh, doing ministry uh, with Bob? Yeah, the, uh, I often start my story with like I grew up the son of my parents. <laughs> and, uh, surprise, surprise. Um, and uh, really, uh, I think, in, in enjoyed in one sense and made it easy for my parents. First uh, first 12 years of my, my those childhood. Were, those were the good years. The golden, the golden age. Mm-hmm. And uh, was a, I, was a really, I was a really good kid. I, um, I was. <laughs> Maybe up I until that point, I was, a good, I was a good kid. You were, and you obedient were very and compliant. compliant and uh, mm. uh, loved my parents and loved my family. Um, when I was six, we uh, participated in planning a church in Charlotte, mm. North Carolina, and I loved that experience from six to twelve that we were there and seeing the church grow and uh, mm. uh, ha- having the opportunity to see my my dad in ministry and to be able to feel like I was participating in ministry. Um, as the church grew, uh, I felt like I was the coolest kid there was, um, and uh, that... It was that, a small church. <laughs> it was a small church, and that uh, that I came to see really, really marked my experience of the world. Um, hmm. And so when we moved, when I was 12, up to uh, Maryland, and uh, we moved to a, a larger church, um, I didn't know anybody, hmm. uh, and... Uh, that that season, I I, I um, grew to really not like the church, not like my parents, mm-hmm. and uh, I hated God, um, honestly. Mm-hmm. And so, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, um, and just there was growing, growing rebellion, growing, growing deception in my life, and mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to make my my I wanted to enjoy myself, and I wanted to make life miserable for my parents. And you did a good mm-hmm. job. <laughs> if I may say so. So you weren't saved at that time, or you were I was saved? not saved at that okay. time. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so, how much should I get into right now? Do you want me to get into <clears throat> how the Lord saved me? Yeah. Well, uh, also, I, I'm wondering, like that move, um, like that move sounded like it was very difficult. Yeah, it was a big. It was a a big moment in my life. Um, there were, I mean, I think pivotal years, kind of entering into or right around that middle school age, mm. and uh, there's a lot going on mm. in that time. And uh, when we moved, there was a shift that now I look back and I can, I, I see, I understand. There was the shift from I was living for the approval of my parents and the approval of mm. other authority yep. figures. Um, I liked the fact that in in my mind. I was the kid that other parents wanted their kids to hang out with because mm. I was so great. Mm. And so I wanted them to think that I was as great as I thought I was. <laughs> and uh, I lived for that. And and so it, the outward expression of that uh, seemed really great mm. because I was obedient and I was mm-hmm. compliant and I, I knew the answers and I, I, was, I was doing the right things. Yeah. Uh, when we moved, that, that shifted um, where instead of living for the approval of 
my parents and other authority figures, I realized, oh, I'm not the cool kid in this context, and mm-hmm. I really want to be the cool yeah. kid, and mm-hmm. I don't know any of the cool kids. And mm-hmm. so what do I need to do to be one of the cool kids? And so I, instead of living for my parents' approval, it was living for my, my peers' approval. Mm-hmm. Um, and looking back now, you see, it's like it's clear to see that both of them, it was, it was idolatrous, mm-hmm. uh, even though the one was a lot easier for my parents than the other well, was. Well, I was going to say, yeah, I, it had to be a shock. Was it a shock or... Uh, was it a shock? <laughs> yeah. That up, sudden change yeah, that so it Devin, felt like? Devin was our third child out of six. And we thought with the first, if, if God had just given us two children, we would have thought we were amazing parents. <laughs> and then Devin came. <laughs> and, you know, as he said, when he was 12, we just realized, wow, we are desperate parents. Hmm. We have no idea what we're doing, especially me. I can't speak for Julie. Julie's an amazing mom and took a lot of the brunt of Devin's rebellion and disrespect when I was away on mm-hmm. trips. Um, but I realized, wow, I don't, I don't think I know what I'm doing. And, wow. and probably one of the biggest things that I realized was I thought I'd been parenting for God's glory, and I realized, no, what, you're really parenting for your glory. Mm. Because as he began to rebel, as, as things came out about him, we had to take him off the soccer team, off the basketball team. We had to just restrict him in so many ways. I'm a pastor in a church, and it just looks bad, mm. you know? It just looks bad. Um, but through the help of friends, through the help of, you know, uh, just people I respect, uh, I, we were helped. That God, God enabled us to get through those, those years wow. um, and change us in the process. Mm. So, yeah, was it a shock? It was... It was a huge shock. <laughs> so how did you come to uh, faith? Yeah, so during that time, uh, as he mentioned, um, they, my, my parents, they didn't pull away from me, even though there was a little in me that mm. would have uh, wanted somebody, uh, somebody would have been prompted to press into, mm. um, and uh, they, they pressed in. Mm. Um, and what that looked like was uh, just keeping the gospel ever before me. And so, even though I grew up in a um, uh, a context that did proclaim the gospel often, I heard the gospel hundreds and hundreds of times, mm-hmm. whether it be uh, Sunday mornings or um, in in youth group settings or in, in the context of my home. Um, heard the gospel all the time, and when when this all happened, these years twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, it, that didn't stop. And mm-hmm. so they kept the gospel ever before me, and they they were patient with me. And uh, one of the ways that was expressed in particular was during that time, I was probably 13, we started meeting together mm. on a regular basis. And uh, mm. we, would, we would normally go to Starbucks at the time, and um, I was... Which I, we both I, hated. I, yeah, I was going to say, I remember <laughs> I, just sitting in the car <laughs> as we're going. He would pick me up from school or something. We'd go over to Starbucks. I'm just thinking, like, oh, this is the worst. I hate this. And then come to find out later, like he's feeling I the same thing. I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> why am I doing this? It's bearing no fruit. How, why, how did I get here? Wow. After all we've invested wow. in. Here? And so wow. we did that. And uh, I mean, I just remember um, over over time. So I mean, there were miserable times often, and it was mostly just because of my my pride and my um, uh, lack complete lack of desire to be a blessing. In you any were not way the greatest others. conversation partner. <laughs> And so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one there was there was a shift that took place as we were doing that, and uh, he began to just draw me out about things I was interested in, mm-hmm. and uh, and not doing it in a way. Initially, I mean, there was there was um, I didn't trust him initially, and so it took some time before I realized, oh, he's not asking me so he can correct me. Mm-hmm. He's just asking me because he wants to know about me wow. and talk and get me talking. Wow. Um, so we, we were doing that and that was, uh, uh, again, miserable, but you see the Lord's Lord work through it. Uh, we started reading some books together. Um, and so, uh, there was a few, a few different books when, when people, people are, are big, big and God is small by Ed Welch, we read, hmm. and, uh, I wouldn't have been a believer when we probably, when we started reading that, uh, I was probably been 14 or so, um, read a couple other books. And then in particular, I remember when we were reading, uh, the Enemy Within by Chris Lungard. Mm-hmm. And as we're reading that at one point, and you, maybe you want to pick up uh, that, that yeah. moment because you remember it. 
probably better than I, I do. I remember it very <laughs> clearly. Um, yeah, uh, go, I should say going through all this, I was thinking, I'm being a faithful parent. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I was driven by the idea or the thought, the truth, the reality that if you can be successful in ministry, but if you're not successful in your home, uh, you, you're really not successful mm-hmm. um, because God God says a lot about the home, and mm-hmm. especially for what a leader is supposed to manage his household well. Mm-hmm. And I knew that wasn't happening, so that's what I was trying to do: humble myself. Thought I was doing a pretty good job, and then we're reading through this book, uh, which is really a condensation, uh, a, a simplification of John <laughs> Owen's um, condensation, huh? Yeah, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's condensed <laughs> very simply. Uh, of John Owen's Sin and Temptation, mm. Mortification of Sin, mm. um, which are just amazing in the original version. Um, so we're reading it, and Devin uh, says to me out of the blue, Dad, I feel like this is the first time that you're not looking, speaking down to me, but you're like actually speaking with me as a fellow sinner. Wow. And that was one of those aha moments where mm. I realized how blind I had been. Mm. And I began to see that all the things that I saw in him that I just thought were so bad, his pride, his anger, especially those two, I dealt with those. Mm. And I was just becoming you know, angry at him because I was so proud. Mm. I, I would never do this if I was your age. I was such a good kid. Those were the things I'm thinking. But in that moment, I think God really used that to to move us forward. And I was able to confess my sin to him much more regularly, much more genuinely, mm. and say, Dev, I'm just failing. I'm, I, But here's what I can do. I remember telling him this numerous times. I'm going to fail you as a dad, but I, I am going to, till you leave this house and for the rest of your life, I'm going to point you to the fact that there is no one like Jesus Christ. Mm. He has changed my life, changed, and I want him to change yours. And so I just, that's what I knew. You know, I know I'm not going to be the greatest dad in the world, but mm. I can point you to Jesus and I can point you to his word. Mm. That's doctrine having an effect, you know, in the home. That's it's, so encouraging to um, parents with rebellious children. Oh, we've talked to a lot. <laughs> because because um, there, I think you explained there's a lot of revealing of sin and pride and arrogance that you are oh. dealing with and anger. But I also think... Um, there, there's a hopelessness. Yes. When what do I, what do I do? You know. Well, and it's it's this paradox because I remember one time being at a conference, this big conference, celebration conference, we call it, and you know thousands of people. I'd I'd be leading. You know, people would be <laughs> just countering the Lord, and, mm-hmm. and it'd just be an amazing time. Then I'd walk off the platform, and there would be Devin, you know, with his hat worn some weird way, just looking up at me like yeah, I'm thinking, he's thinking, you're the worst parent in the world. <laughs> and like all of a sudden, I, it's from the mountaintops to like the lowest valley, the pits. <laughs> And I'm thinking, what did I do to deserve this? Like, mm. I'm. Doesn't he know who I am? Do you know who I am? That's what I want to say. To him. I'm Bob you know? Coughlin. I like lead thousands to you know, encounter the Lord. I was re- just trying to keep him, keep him down. Or oh, you did a great job. Way. But it's that it's that humbling paradox where God shows you what you really are, mm. what your life is really like, mm. and Jesus becomes that much more glorious. Mm. And that's oh my, those were hard, but. But those years were so important. Would you say there was a shift that took place where it went from you wanted to see me change because of how it reflected on you to you wanted to see me change uh, because you wanted to see me love Jesus? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that took a while, mm. I think, to really to discern what to was identify in my heart. that. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't, you know, even after you were converted, I remember it wasn't like, oh, now Devin's not proud anymore. Uh, you know, one of our, our biggest issues was we would judge each other, sinfully judge mm-hmm. each other. And, you know, he'd say something and I'd see it as disrespect and mm-hmm. I'd or react in a way yeah. that, you know, that, and then he'd react to my reaction. And, you know, it was just, so every time that happened, I sought to just acknowledge it. Devin, mm-hmm. when you said this, you know, I, I'm sorry, I was judging your heart. And, and it might've been true. But I couldn't know it was true, yeah. and I just assumed it was. So that, boy, we asked each other's forgiveness yep. so many times, and a well, lot less now. Yeah, and well, I think what um, you're both explaining is I think there was um, 
there was a humbling taking place, but you were still pressing in. It wasn't a dismissiveness yes. towards his behavior or his, his rebellion. You were pressing in. And, well, you know. I think parents can can vassal, go to one or two extremes. Yeah, yeah. You know, one is everything depends on me, and mm-hmm. and they freak out, and it's just like we're gonna, you know, lock you down. We're gonna, you know. Pff- fill you with scripture and just without real love and without a real humility. Mm. And then the other side is, well, we can't do anything. You know, we did the best we could for the time they were 10 years old, and now we just let them go. And so we tried to walk that middle ground of, let's say, you know, spirit-empowered, grace-motivated involvement. Mm. And I remember telling him one time, (laughs) this one time, I was talking about his hat. Hats were a big issue, which if I was parenting again, I wouldn't make it this big an issue. (laughs) Um, and I was glad to hear that Devin says it can be an issue with him and his son sometimes. Um, just, you know, hats can... We're working on it. Yeah, the way you wear it. And <laughs> so it was this huge issue. And I said, um, Devin, you know, if I told you that, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to wear your hat and you're rebelling and, you know, that's it's it's just really bad. And if if you... I forget exactly how I said it, but something to the effect of, you know, it, would you rather go to hell with a hat on or not oh, wear a hat. And he said, I'd rather go to hell with a hat on. <laughs> that was an easy answer. <laughs> the hat must have been super cool. Uh, so, it, was a big, it was a big deal to me. It, it was a big deal. and um, But it was probably just something that you were holding on to, like, this yeah. is mine. This yep. is part of my identity. This is who I am. Yep. Like, I'm going to... Absolutely. It was, just, it was all about my power, my hmm. authority. And yeah, parent children should respect their parents, but God was changing me hmm. in the process. That's so and, great. It was, it's, it's the Lord's grace, you know, that He changes both parent and child. Yeah. That's so great. In the same pro- because and of the gospel. I, I never finished, but the Lord did save me. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> there wasn't a. Uh, I'll have to leave you hanging. Yeah, <laughs> just in case you were sitting there weeks just, ago. Is Devin a Christian now? <laughs> the uh, uh, it was a process. There wasn't a moment in time where I'd say, "Yeah, the Lord saved me." But definitely by the time we were having that conversation on the couch, going through the enemy within. Mm. I would have been saved then. Um, it was around around the time I was fifteen, mm. and uh, it was just through their their continued proclamation of and modeling of the gospel, um, mm. and in in the home, and then seeing uh, and hearing uh, the gospel again and again in our church context and in, in our youth group, and um, the Lord just gradually softened my heart yeah. and opened my eyes to the fact that I was a sinner mm. and in need of. This, Safe, being saved, yeah, yeah. and in need of grace. Um, so the Lord used that to to, to transform my heart. And mm. as He did that, he, I mean, it, He just continued to work through our relationship. Mm. And uh, what a what a sweet gift that's been. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. it's so wonderful. So, yeah. w- so uh, like after you were saved, did you immediately start doing ministry with? Bob, I mean, what what has that been like? <laughs> right away. The, uh, so it, during my rebellion, I have an older brother as well, Jordan, mm-hmm. and uh, the good son, the good son, <laughs> the older brother, <laughs> the and older brother. Uh, he he always, as long as I can remember, aspired to be like my dad and be in ministry. Mm-hmm. Told us he um, wanted to be an evangelist when he was ten. <laughs> wow. And. Uh, I wanted nothing to do with it, <laughs> and uh, so so my rebellion in one hmm. sense it was both again it was against my parents, but it, it took the form of I don't want to be like my brother. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I was happy to go my own way. Then the Lord saved me, and uh, there was not any stirring to oh yeah I should be in ministry. Um, and in fact, actually there was this there was this point towards the end of high school, going in college, uh, where I, where I was just. As I was praying about the future and reflecting on what what has the Lord called me to do, um, there was this realization, you know what, growing up as a as a pastor's kid and with my brother wanting to go in ministry, it's like ministry is all I know. Mm-hmm. And there's a sense in which it's going to take more faith for me to step outside of that uh, than to just kind of try and stay in it. Um, and, and there wasn't a there wasn't a leading or prompting from Bob, not at was all. Saying. Not at all. I was all. thinking he's never going into ministry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having a thought. Uh, we were at a small group meeting with youth, and I, so it's it, about probably 10, 15 kids, and yeah. a handful of parents. Yeah, mm. and uh, so I hear someone singing behind me, and um, it's horrible. It just sounds like oh, 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 oh. it just—it's not on pitch. It's not. No. And I turn around, and it's Devin, oh, and I think, goodness. well, at least Jordan's going to go into ministry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, I had no hopes. No, if he, the fact that he was a Christian was the was 
such a gift from God, and you know, if he did anything productive with his life, I would be very happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lord led me to, I went to uh, University of Maryland, majored in business, and was in sales, and that's the path that I went down. And uh, For the, how long were you in sales? Uh, I wasn't ready to answer that question. Six, seven years yeah. or something. Wow. I was in business, and you know, I was happy to be um, a man who uh, faithfully loved his wife and loved his kids yeah. and uh, followed the Lord and served the church um, hmm. and, uh, and, and, and gave to support the church. I mean, like, yeah. I was fine being that guy. Um, and along the way, the Lord has given me opportunities to serve in ministry. Well, yeah, go back to, like, high school. Yeah, so... I don't know when you started playing for the... Yeah, so after... after I started playing guitar. Um, <laughs> in your I, got a, I got a guitar on my 12th birthday, which was two days before we moved... Oh, wow. ...to Maryland. Maryland. And this is one of the remarkable things, just seeing how the Lord works. So I'm learning guitar, and my world was very small. And I wanted to teach him piano because I taught, tried to teach all my kids piano, and but he I said, no way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was not a good student. So I taught you three chords on guitar. <laughs> yeah, so he showed me three chords on guitar. First song I learned was, Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes. And, uh, and he gave me a chord book, and we had all kinds of chord charts around mm-hmm. um, the house yeah. of, of songs that we sang. Uh, in our church, hmm. and and that was that was my world, hmm. and so those were the songs that I knew. So even in the midst of my rebellion, I'm learning how to play guitar, and how I'm learning how to play guitar is playing all these all these songs we sing for corporate worship. That's so great. Um, and so I mean that's that's what I did. That was wow. like that was my outlet. And so hmm. as the Lord, I'm sure the Lord used that to soften my heart as well. I mean, just keeping me in front of yes. the truth, hmm. the truth, and um, yeah, what a gift that is. I remember. I mean, even mm-hmm. learning how to play. One of the one of the earlier songs I learned how to play because it was in G at the time was "Alas and Did My Savior Bleed." Mm-hmm. Your arrangement of that. Wow. Wow. And uh, and so I mean I'm in the throes of rebellion, <laughs> learning. Uh, yeah. Alas and Alas did my savior bleed. And did yeah. My savior. And did my sovereign for such, die for yeah. such a for worm, such a worm as, as I. I. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so kind of the Lord. So uh, he mentioned that that yeah. small group, um, uh, probably around 15, 16, mm-hmm. I started uh, leading. Are singing in in that context. Okay, um, and uh, I it was one of the first moments that I I was like just evaluating things, and it's like, all right, my dad's been doing this for twenty five years, and I've never done it before, so he knows a lot more than I do. <laughs> so wealth so, of information. Yeah. So let me uh-huh. ask him uh, like how I can do better. Yeah. Um, and so I remember both beforehand as I, as I was choosing the two or three songs that I was going to yeah. lead. And then afterwards, we would just spend hours, really hours, talking about what could I do better. Mm-hmm. And so we, I mean, it was the uh, place that we met at the time was really, I mean, I think two minutes away from our house. But I remember every time we'd get in the car afterwards, drive home, Dad, what could I have done better? I remember that too. Because it wow. was such a shock. Because there was no other, a- no yeah, other part of his life he was anywhere humble. else. Yeah. So then wow. as I took those steps, and so we'd, I mean, we'd come home and we'd talk about it and... Uh, yeah, to just talk about the things I could have done differently or how I could have thought about it differently. Um, and we did that, I mean, week after week a lot, yeah. for, for a long wow. time. And then as I was leading in larger contexts or different contexts, I mean, continue to have those same conversations. As I was leading at different conferences and events, we were still having those same conversations. We mm-hmm. still have those conversations so now. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so for me, God used that to just see, oh, when God says he gives grace to the humble, like he really does. Mm. And uh, What a surprise. Yeah, what a shocker. Um, and so then, so that, that's kind of, I was doing all that stuff. Uh, Lord led me to, uh, to, um, change, shift directions in my life, uh, in 2012 now. And, Mm. uh, I went into ministry and now serve as a pastor at Grace Church in Maryland and, uh, DC suburbs. Um, and it's just a joy to be, be doing Mm. that. I would have never imagined. One thing my, my wife asked me before we were married, she was like, you're not ever going to be a pastor, right? I said, no way. <laughs> never going to be a pastor. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, here we are. And uh, she still loves me and is married to me. <laughs> that's so alive. wonderful. Coming on 15 years. Yeah. I just wow. think I think it's cool, um, Dev, when I just hear your story and what we've talked about over the years together is that um, you grew up in a ministry home, a music ministry home, but you were in business for six, seven years but it was a love for the church that sort of like was grounding you during yeah. that time. Yeah. It wasn't that, oh, I need to go yeah. be a 
worship pastor. Yeah, yeah. he modeled so well that yeah. like faithfulness isn't isn't determined by uh, your ministry platform. Right. Faithfulness is determined by loving the Lord and obeying Him. Right. And uh, so I never yeah. felt like, oh, if I go into business, I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be a letdown. Right. Or I'm taking, mm-hmm. yeah, taking a step down from really pleasing God. Wow. Uh, he never modeled that, never taught that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, yeah, felt free to follow where the Lord was calling me and where the Lord led me. And so then to see the Lord open those doors over time and lead me to where I am now. <laughs> I mean, it's only God could do it. Only God could do it. Yeah, it's one of those things where I, I you know, when you have kids, young kids, you, you have dreams for them, and you think, well, that'd be great. I, I almost didn't dare to dream that my two sons, two sons, four daughters, uh, that my two sons would be in ministry someday. Mm. You know, I just I, I just left that in the Lord's hands. It, I, I wanted them to, to know Jesus, to know that he died in their place, that to forgive their sins, that they could know God as a result, and that um, it, it, it's just the most glorious thing you could do in life. And then whatever else to do after that, fine. Mm. But then God gives me the gift of, you know, both my sons are pastors, and that's just wild. I, I never... I remember one time uh, leading a conference, John Piper was um, preaching, and he looked at me and said, don't ever, don't ever take it for granted that you can minister up here with your children. That was like, I don't know, 2008 or something, 2009. And I don't. I yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a gift from God. Um, didn't have to turn out that way, yeah. but it did. Yeah, it's not something you put your hope in or live no, for. No, no. Yeah. But what a gift it is. Yeah. That is so wonderful. I feel like we could talk about this all day long, um, but I need to draw this to a close. Um, and so it's been awesome having Dev uh, in with us. We're going to yeah. have other podcasts yep. uh, that he's going to join us for. And talk through, but uh, thank you so much for tuning in and listening, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Amen. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at sovereigngracemusic.org.